This is what I call a level 2 circuit. Kind of a bit of tricky stuff here. Ammeter reading is 0. Now that's a very important clue because that tells me, firstly, there's no, of course. If we have said there's a current flowing through, is there any current? No, there's no current. So that's it. So if you have battery decide having a current, it comes here, goes down. Hmm. Does current flow through this other wire? These are what we call bridges, by the way. There's a double bridge. One bridge up here and another bridge down there, which is the emitter. So if down there current is zero, can this other bridge have current? Actually, no. So if the current down there is zero, current up here is zero. Now you may argue with me and say, Miss, why don't current come down here and go over here? Well, you're going to have problems here because you see you have another battery, another current coming down. And say, okay, maybe they join together. Then there's more current in this part. And it can't cross over the bridge, so it has to go back to the battery. Now we're going to have a problem here because here will be a larger current, whereas what came out of the battery was a smaller current. And this is weird. You cannot... You can't just create current. Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff or Kirchhoff's first law says that. So you got a problem here. If you want current to cross over that bridge really badly, then you must have current cross over the other bridge to go back to the other battery. Make sense? Okay. So, I mean, they join together here. And then once they split again, you're back to the green current. And you have this. But... Like I said, there's no current, so both bridges will have no current at all. So this orange circuit will just have its own current by itself. And the other green circuit will have its own current just staying in its own loop. Nobody crosses the bridge. You don't cross, I don't cross. It's a two-way bridge. Now, what do we do next? What else do we know based on the idea that there is no current there? The second thing you need to know is potential difference. If there is no current crossing through this bridge, means the potential potential here is the same as the potential there. We'll use the idea in a little bit. Okay, so something to do with potential. Now, I'm going to stress that there is a difference between potential and potential difference. So, potential is... <coughs> If you start off with a 12 volt potential, it means all along the wire, if you didn't use up any energy, you're staying at the 12 volt potential. When you come to this resistor, you're going to drop. So there will be a potential difference over here. But what is the potential difference? Can we find that? Let's call this potential difference V1 for resistor 1. So we're going to use some ratios to help us out. Ratio is our best friend. The potential drop across resistor 1 over the total potential drop, which is 12, I know that because of the battery, it's the same ratio as that resistor 1's re resistance, 50 ohms, over the total resistance in that particular loop. So 150 ohm. Okay, we're treating this as one loop because current's not crossing the bridge and we don't want to go to the other side. So here your V1 will give you, what's the value? Uh? 12, 4 volts. So this is a 4 volt potential difference or potential drop. Okay, so I'm going to write here 4 volt drop. Now what does a 4 volt drop mean? It means if before you were up there, you were 12, you are dropping by 4 volts. So you go to 8 volts down here. Okay, you drop by 4. Ma. So I yeah, write here, la, 4 volt drop. Potential difference. So it's a difference. What is 12 minus 8 for? Okay, then you keep going down. So if that one is a 4 volt drop, what must be this one? We're going back to the battery already. So you better get 0 volt drop here because when you go back to the battery, that should be a 0 volt potential. So if your potential difference is 4 up there, this should be 8 because 8 plus 4 is 12. Total rise, total drop. It's kind of like this diagram. You go up like an elevator, like you go up by 12 volts. Then you take the stairs down, you drop by 4, and then you drop again by 8. Oh, 8 should be much bigger. Sorry, my ratios are a bit off. Take the stairs down, 4. Take the stairs down, 8 volt drop. Okay, what goes up must come down. Okay, so we got this side done. Now the important clue is, if this is 8 volt, 
potential here means on the other side it should be 8 volt because that means across this line there is no potential difference. So current will not flow in that section. If you find it strange to brain this, think about this. If your table is flat, here is 12 meter high, here is 12 meter high, and you put water in the middle, will water flow? Not exactly. But what if you tilt this thing and make it an inclined plane? This is 12 meter high, this is 8 meter high. Height, ah, height. Then you put water here, pour water here. The water will all flow downhill. Similar thing to current. Current will flow from high potential to low potential. But if both potential are the same, no flow. Sorry about that. So that's the first hint, 8. Now let's think of the other side. Here, you have a potential of 24. So you start off with 24, 24. Come here, it's still 24, but oh, you hit the resistor. Current is flowing through it, so you're going to lose some energy. Now, what is the potential drop here? Can we find the potential difference across number 3? That's what we're trying to find, right? We don't know. I don't know. Let's put a question mark there first. That's what we're trying to find. Okay, never mind. How about the next part? You know the potential is 8, it should drop to 0 because they're going back to the battery. So 8 dropped to 0. Oh, that means there's a potential drop of how much? 8 volts. Because 8 minus 0 is 8. So from there, then you can calculate, oh, 24 dropped by a certain amount and dropped by 8 should be 0. So that means 24 minus 8. 16 volts drop over here. So first, from 24, you drop by 16 volts, you reach 8. Drop by another 8 volts, you reach 0. Make sense? Okay. These are all drops. Now that we know all the, what you call that, the potential differences, we can do ratios to find resistance. So, let's do a ratio now for the green side of the circuit. Actually, let me use green since we're color coding everything. So ratio, what are we trying to find? Resistance of resistor 3. Now should I ratio over total resistance? It'll be hard because if I use total resistance, it'll be R plus 200. That's a bit troublesome. So no, I'm going to use the ratio of R3 over R4. Okay, so R4 is down there and I'm just going to use the value which is 200 ohm. Equals to potential drops so the potential drop across R3 is 16 volts. Potential drop across R4 is 8 volts. That will give me a value of R3 as 16 divided by 8 times 200, which is 400 ohms. So the ratio is the same. Okay. Now, let's look for the answer. 400 ohm, the answer is ta -da, C. So yes, when you see circuits like this, stay calm. No the difference between potential drop, red color one, and just potential. They're all in units of volts, so that's kind of annoying. You know, frankly speaking, potential should be V, and PD, potential difference, should be delta V. That's a difference there. Okay, make sure you know the difference. Go try out more circuits like this. It's what we call a double bridge circuit. There are also many other bridge circuits which have similar ideas of ratios, potential dividers, and you know, all kinds of potential drops. Okay, that's all for this question. See you in the next one.